This is Marla Thirsk at Eclectic Gallery, and I wanted to ask Marla a few questions about your artwork. Mm -hmm. And you have two really very different styles of work that you've presented. And this painting in particular is one of my favorites. It, it's a very strong image. And I wanted to ask you a, a little bit about Red Riding Hood. <laughs> Red Riding Hood. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, I used to dress up as Red Riding Hood when I was a child. Very interesting. Yes, but this painting itself, um, when I started painting all the figures that I have been doing, um, I kind, they kind of brought up a lot of stories that were inside me, a lot of things that had happened to me. And I started exploring different things that had happened to me during my life. And this one was during a time when I uh, was actually living with a very bad man who led me down a road of a lot of addiction and alcoholism, etc. So it was a reflection on the whole mythology of how, as women, we kind of get swallowed up by those bad boys. We love bad boys. It's interesting yeah. because I see the Red Riding Hood as an adult, mm -hmm. like it's no longer the child. No. She's very adultish, and she's actually chasing the wolf. She's behind the wolf. The wolf is ahead of her. So I just found that so amazing. And to me, that there's something about the wildness, and there's an innocence in this child too. There's a, there's a real like knowing, mm -hmm. and she's out there in the forest, and uh, it's a very powerful symbol. And and I like, you know, the spilt glass of wine. There's there's a lot of symbols going on. There's a lot of symbolism in, in it because. Like I say, I was telling stories with it. And most of my paintings are telling a story when I paint. So can yeah. you tell, explain a little further, like what the stories are or how you got around to, um, to oh. telling these stories? You're a star story. How it started was I actually saw a really great painting of a woman in a 1950s bathing suit. And I thought to myself, I have a great collection of photographs of my mom, who was very photogenic, but she had been dead for 30 years. And I decided, well, I'll pull them out and maybe I can find something I want to paint because I was just really intrigued with that. The minute I started doing that, it was like the floodgates opened and the next thing I knew, all this stuff was coming out, all these powerful paintings that were delving into this strange relationship that my mother and I had had, all the stories that led from there, me growing up and what happened. And so that's basically where all this figurative work started out. But I have always been known for the landscapes I've done, which is kind of interesting, but I've never been formally trained. So I think because of that, I don't pigeonhole myself. I go with what is interesting and maybe it has a bit to do with being a Gemini too, you know? the magpie the yes flying around so, yeah there, there's an interesting um, you know relationship between the series of portraits that you've done of your mother because I I did not realize it and until reading your book, that that these were all of the, the same person, because they, there's so many different personas mm -hmm. that are portrayed, and and each one has a really strong characterization, and there's there's something about the eyes and the the kind of uh, emotional moodiness of, of the images as well. They have a very strong um, feel to them. And, and I, I, I appreciate what you said about storytelling because each one is a story unto itself. It is, it is. And each one, I don't consciously start out going, well, this is the story I'm going to portray now. I find a, a photograph that interests me, the pose. Sometimes I play around with the pose of it. Uh, originally, when the first painting that I did, when I was trying to actually paint my mother's face, I think I redid it 20 times and was suffering over trying to get her exact face when um, a contemporary of mine said, stop doing that, just paint a face, and then whatever will come out will be right. And that is exactly what happened in each of them. But you know, there is, 
the theme of the red hair because she had red hair and that sort of carries through with all of them yeah. well there's there's one you know some of them have a real joyfulness as well like the 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 woman sitting with the, the dog on her lap I mean and she's just got this you know beaming smile on her face and that's a later work I worked yep. through all the dark shadowy things yes uh, about a year ago and that now it's like the light is coming That's out fantastic. of us so yeah. how long have you been working on this series uh, probably about five years four years five years I think yeah because it, it really um, compounds seeing more of them together as well like the, the wall opposite us has four of the paintings yeah. and your eye just flits back and forth from one to the other and it, it's so interesting to have figurative work as opposed to landscape, because landscape, it's there, it's it's um, it's geographical for one, yeah. but it's also abstract. It's immediately abstract, abstract because it's two dimensional, and so it takes you into another space, another kind of place and time. Whereas these are, um, there's a sense of nostalgia, there's a sense of reminiscing about the past, of something going on, and yet there's something very quirky. You know, there's something there's a bit of quirkiness in there. twisted yeah. about this yes. as well. Yeah. I am fascinated by color and pattern. Uh -huh. That's another thing too, is I, I really love to play with that going on in there. And uh, I think that people, when they look at them, they make their own stories up, which is part of the fascination of doing these works. But it has been a hard road because the West Coast expects West Coast Coast art. So for me, I am very different. I am very different. The behind this painting is, and this is one of my early works, is my mom was an amazing gardener. She could make anything bloom. Um, she was known for the roses she grew, everything. But her skills as a parent, shall we say, were not as fruitful. So hence, I kind of gave her flowers that were slightly dying in the painting and that look on her face where she's not really sure you know there's a questioning in there and it was always between us we were always trying to figure out who we were what we were to each other and I think there's so many stories behind her she was a Dutch war bride she came over from Holland my father had met her over there as part of the Canadian Liberation Forces she was brave enough to leave a very large family come over all by herself English was not her first language my father wasn't with her because of course they had to be demobbed out of the um, Air Force at that time she traveled across Canada by herself and stayed with my dad's parents before they were married and she did this all alone but when she died I found out that she had actually been engaged to be married to a young man that was killed during the war and he was part of the Dutch forces now when she met my dad I don't know whether the story was that he looked to her like someone who would take her away from the pain of that would take her to a country where there wasn't the the suffering that they had gone through during the war and it was pretty tough on her I know and um, he was the one who couldn't have children. It wasn't my mom. Mm. And I don't know whether he didn't tell her. There's it's so many stories, you know, that are hidden and you don't find these things out until later in your life. And these things come out. I never knew this until my dad was uh, very ill in hospital and my uncle told me that. It was ages and ages had gone by. I was a grown woman. And then I find this out, but I had never known that. So did he tell her before he married her? Or was this a big surprise to her? So that's all in there too, yeah. you know? Yeah, there's, that's there's hence why the apple is there, which is the sign of, you know, fertility. Yeah. Well, that's, that's really amazing. And I, I love, you know, what you've done in, in the um, surrounding area as well. Because um, it, it, there is a very thoughtful expression, you know, and it really provokes like what's going on in this painting. But, but as you see each of them, they are, the faces to me are very strong, and it, it's um, 
Well, thanks for Marla's sharing. Marla's also written a book, and it, in it she um, shows some of her source photographs. All of these figurative paintings are of her mother at different stages in her life. And so, Marla, maybe you can tell us a bit about the process of creating the book and the images in it. Uh, when I started, I found that uh, originally when I pulled out the paintings to start painting, they brought up and started making stories for me of my life and that. And I took all the poses of my mom and I would change them a little bit and that, but all of them carry through with the theme of her red hair, which was sort of a defining thing with her. And as you can see, you know, I've put in things and I, she raised poodles, which she said gave her a lot more pleasure than her children ever did, which <laughs> is kind of funny. And this one here, which is also up on the wall too, you know, um, iconic 1950s leopard skin pants sort of thing and her growing the thing. So, you know, it's just stories. All of my paintings are stories of what has happened. So Marla's show continues at Eclectic through the month of July. So we have it for a good long run. And we're very looking forward to the responses to your work. I am too. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Very much. Yeah.